I'm Kathleen Henderson from Roots and Boots, and I want to take you on a quick tour of my Zone 7A, almost mid-July garden. So over here is where my watermelon and cucumbers are not doing so hot, but the rest of the garden is doing great. This is my tunnel of covered brassicas, broccoli and cauliflower. Cauliflower did so-so, really happy with the broccoli. We've had at least six weeks of really solid harvest. I harvest it once a week, and every week we get enough for two meals for our family of five, and I'm even uh, preserving some. The squash is doing so-so as well. I might do a separate video about what I'm learning specifically about squash plants and fighting cucumber beetles, which have been terrible for us here in our first few years on the farm. This is my first row of tomatoes, my Amish paste tomatoes. We just mulched them with the bedding from mucking out our goat stalls. I'm excited about that. We're gonna continue that process with the second row of tomatoes. These are my cherries and a variety of heirlooms. I have more tomatoes way down there, rows running perpendicular to these rows. Those tomatoes were planted later, so they're all a little smaller. These are um, my more mature tomatoes. I've got lots of green tomatoes on the vines. These are my carrots. I sowed my carrots in succession, uh, four rows in succession, all about two to three weeks apart. We've already harvested most of the first row, and we'll be harvesting the second row, and then the third and fourth rows are still maturing, and then I plan to continue that succession um, concept with some fall sowings, which I need to do very soon, um, so we can have a fall and winter crop of carrots. These are my onions. Pretty happy with the way the onions are doing. I planted a lot of them. We had a rogue squash plant come up in the middle of it, and I decided even if I wind up sacrificing a few on onions, it's okay, especially because of the way some of my squash plants over here are um, not thriving. Curious to see what variety this is. Squash looks to cross-pollinate, so it could be a bizarre combination. We also have rogue sunflowers coming up right here and another rogue squash plant. They seem to travel in pairs. And again, I'm just letting them do their thing since they came up. Oh look, there's, I have no idea what this is. There's one little baby squash on this plant. It might wind up just being a decorative squash, but it might be an edible one, so time will tell. And then over here, I have parsley that's not doing so hot. Some of it is doing okay. My dill, which is taking forever to grow. This is my overflow celery. The rest of it is planted up in my kitchen garden, and this is doing awesome out here. And then um, way down there, we have the new hugel beds that we've been working on. I'll probably do a separate video all about how we created those hugel beds and what I'll be growing down there. But that is just a quick glance at our almost mid-July garden, the hallelujah of a July garden, as Barbara Kingsolver would say. Highly recommend her book, Animal Vegetable Miracle. All of these sunflowers came up volunteer from the composted horse manure that we use in our gardens, and I transplanted all of them over here to make this row, and it makes me so happy they're all blooming. And I planted some green bean seeds here, um, like just a few days ago, so they haven't sprouted yet. And there's another closer look at our hugel beds. One more thing, I have a little patch of cosmos and zinnia here at the far end of this broccoli and cauliflower tunnel. I love to plant flowers in my vegetable garden to attract pollinators and just to make it pretty. Helps me enjoy being out here. I forgot to mention that because my squash plants, some of them are struggling and because we, we do also fight the squash vine borer, I went ahead and reseeded all of the squash. So I should have, let's see, I saw a few, I should have some new squash plants sprouting. Um, pretty much this is like the last window of opportunity to do that for my zone and still get a harvest. So we'll see if that helps to circumvent the squash vine borer problem and also um, the cucumber beetle problem. And then over here I wanted to show you at the end of my carrot row. I've really struggled to grow calendula this year. I don't know why. I had a lot of little seedlings here, but only about four or five have survived and they're taking forever to grow. And then I also have zinnias 
at the end of this row of onions and more sunflowers over here for little cheerful spots throughout the vegetable garden.